Hey friend, Chris here from MyLogicProRules.com, the website that helps you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro. Welcome to day 16 in our Newbie to Ninja series here on the channel and website. We're going to help you go from being a beginner in Logic Pro to becoming an expert, fully comfortable and capable to get right down to making awesome music in this amazing application. Today, I want to walk you through the different recording modes that are available to you in Logic Pro so you can get exactly the recording and performance that you need for your projects. From cycle or loop record to quick punch in, auto punch and replace modes, Logic Pro will adapt recording to fit your needs. Today, we're gonna record some bass guitar into the project that we've seen and heard from from the last few videos. I've already gone ahead and loaded an audio track into this project and I've set the input for the channel strip to that of an instrument input on my audio interface. If we hover our mouse in the left edge of the setting field in the channel strip in the inspector, we can see this triangle icon pop up if we click on this icon, this will open the library with the focus of the library set to the current patch that I've loaded for my bass track. And we can see that I'm using the modern stack patch under the clean bass category, under the electric guitar and bass patch category. Okay, I'm gonna press Y on my Mac's keyboard to close the library. Because the modern stack track is selected, this track is record enabled, so we can start recording into the project. So I'll press R on my Mac's keyboard, but you of course could always go up to the recording button in the top control bar. Let's record a passive bass guitar into the project, and then we'll dig into these different recording modes to lay down subsequent takes. Here we go. All right, we've done our first passive bass guitar recording. And I'm actually going to mute the wide soft clav as well as the simple physics piano, just so we have an easier time hearing the bass guitar. Now I feel okay about my performance, but honestly, I really think I could do a better job on certain sections. So first I wanna show you cycle recording in Logic Pro, which allows you to set the cycle range to a particular section of your project and then record on a loop-based basis. As mentioned in previous videos, the cycle range is the yellow bar at the top of the tracks area. We can click on the cycle range to either enable or disable it. And we can set the boundaries of the cycle range by hovering our mouse over the left and right boundaries. Click, hold, and drag. And you can also enable or disable the cycle range by clicking on the cycle range button right at the top. And with the cycle range set, in this case, for bars one and two, the playhead will start at bar one, it will make its way to bar three, and then loop back around to bar one and start playback all over again. Let's give it a try. Right, a fantastic tool for listening back to different sections of your projects on a loop. And another great feature of the cycle range is that we can use it for recording too. In the case of our audio track, with the cycle range set to bars one and two, when I press record, we'll get that count in that's been specified as a single bar. So we'll get the four clicks of the metronome. And as soon as the playhead reaches bar one, recording will begin. And when we get to bar three, the playhead will loop back around to bar one and thus begin recording another take and we can keep recording on a cycle basis for as long as we need to. So let's give it a try right now. Here we go. Pressing spacebar on my Mac's keyboard, I stop recording and playback, and now we have three new takes for bars one and two that we can choose through and comp with. For example, if I hover my mouse over a take in this take folder, when we see this line icon, we can click on individual takes to be able to hear them. And we can also use that line icon to click, hold, and swipe to be able to choose a specific section of a take, which is promoted to the final comp for this track. Let's turn off the cycle range. And if you notice, there are two crossfades at each edit point between takes four, three, and one. Logic automatically generates these crossfades for us in our take folders. And when we hit play, we shouldn't hear any sort of pops or clicks of bad edits because the crossfades will ensure smooth transitions from take to take. Let's take a listen. Perfect. Now, as we explored yesterday, when it comes to software instrument recordings, recording subsequent takes to a software instrument track depends on the recording settings that you have set 
in your version of Logic Pro. So we could either go up to the recording button and then click and hold to bring up a menu and then go down to recording settings. Or we can go to Logic Pro, go down to settings and down to recording. Again, yesterday we dug through all these different overlapping track recordings for software instrument recordings. And by default, Logic Pro just merges any new MIDI data to existing MIDI regions that may be living on your track lanes. Whereas with audio tracks, Logic Pro's default for both when the cycle is on and off is to create a take folder. So check out video number 15 for all of the details, but personally, I would choose to set both the cycle off and on to that of create track alternatives, which we'll explore later in the series. All right, next I wanna hit on bars three and four. Now, of course, once again, we could set the cycle range to bars three and four and begin a loop-based or cycle-based recording. However, instead, let's now explore quick punch-in. Let's turn off the cycle range using key command C on our Mac's keyboard. And if we go back to the recording button, click and hold, we can see that an option called allow quick punch in is enabled, which is noted by the check mark to the left. And with allow quick punch in enabled, we can just begin playback of our project. We don't have to be recording. And then the moment that we want to lay down a part, we just have to press R on our Mac's keyboard or press the record button. Logic will switch from just playback to begin recording to our chosen track lane. You can also enable or disable quick punch in by going to record and then enabling or disabling the option. That's what we're gonna do then. We're gonna punch in bars three and four. I'll just start playing the project from bar one. And when we get close to bar three, I'm gonna press R on my Mac's keyboard to begin recording. Let's give it a try right now. Oh, did you catch that? Logic Pro stopped playback for a second, which makes it almost impossible to begin recording anything. Well, I'm gonna undo by using Command Z. And the last detail is that we need to actually click on the record enable button for our track lane. Now with our track fully record enabled, let's return the playhead to the beginning of the project and try this again. Here we go. All right, we've laid down our take for bars three and four using quick punch in. I went a little longer into bar five, that's A-OK. -okay. And by actually clicking on the record enable button in the track header for our chosen track, Logic Pro's playback didn't stop when I pressed R on my Mac's keyboard. So quick punch in can be really handy and you have a hand free to be able to click on record. But obviously for my scenario where I'm using both hands to play bass guitar, we could see that I had to begin recording earlier than bar three. So there's a little bit of dead space as I was getting prepared to start playing. That leads us to our next recording mode, which is called Auto Punch. First, I'm just gonna quickly comp these takes together by hovering my mouse over the boundaries of each take, clicking, holding, and dragging till I get to about where I wanna be. And then I'll slide this over back to bar five. All right, next we're gonna go up to the control bar and we're gonna right click with our mouse or trackpad or hold control and click. A menu will pop up that allows us to customize the control bar and display. Up until now, we've kind of avoided the fact that the control bar is very customizable, allowing you to introduce or remove different buttons and functions from the control bar. And we have everything for buttons for the different views and windows of Logic Pro to transport functions, the ability to customize the LCD, as well as the ability to show and hide different buttons for different modes and functions in Logic Pro. For example, we can introduce software monitoring in the control bar. So if you wanna be able to hear your audio tracks through Logic Pro's mixer, this will allow you to do it without having to go to the audio settings. We can also introduce the low latency monitoring mode button. So if you're experiencing a delay or latency, we can turn this on or off right from the control bar, once again, without having to dig into any Logic Pro settings. And we also have an option called auto punch, which is a really handy feature if you wanna be able to punch in a certain section but you wanna be able to listen to your project leading up to the part that you plan on recording. From here, we're gonna start recording bars five through seven. And we're gonna click on the auto punch button in the control bar to introduce the auto punch range. We now have a new section at the top of the tracks area with a red range for auto punch. We can click, hold, and drag this range to any location that we need to. We can adjust the boundaries of the auto punch range 
by hovering our mouse over the left and right hand boundaries for punch in and out. And just click, hold, and drag the boundaries to the locations that you need. At this point, with the auto punch range set to bars 5 and 7, when I press record on my Mac's keyboard, recording will not begin until bar 5, and at bar 7, recording will stop, and playback will continue until we stop playback. Now we don't need an extra hand to be able to hit record when we want to record at a particular section. Instead, auto punch will take care of all of this for us. So I'm going to turn off the count in. I'm going to return the playhead to the beginning of the project. And let's start recording for bars 5 and 6. I'll press R on my Mac's keyboard and we'll begin recording. Here we go. There we have it. We now have take six for our bass guitar recording for just bars five and six thanks to auto punch. All I had to do was be ready with my bass guitar to start recording and Logic Pro took care of the punch in and out points. Lastly, we have replace mode, which is exactly that. First, let's quickly lay down another first four bars for this bass part. And from here, let's go up to the control bar and we have replace right next to the auto punch button. But if you don't see this button, just right click or hold control and click in an empty section of the control bar to customize the control bar and display. Right here, we have replace mode, which we can introduce to the control bar. And now let's try recording again. Check it out. Instead of creating a take folder, we've just replaced our first take with the second take. But if we hover our mouse over the left lower boundary of our first take, click and hold, we can see that that audio still exists. It's just been hidden from us and replaced by the second take, but we can reintroduce it just by click, hold, and dragging the left boundary out. Let's also try replace mode with a take folder. I'll get rid of this region and track. We'll record a take without replace mode. Here we go. Okay, we have a take folder now. And let's now enable replace mode. Here we go. Just like that, we've replaced a significant section of take two with this new recording. Everything up until now with cycle record, quick punch, auto punch, all this stuff applies to software instruments as well. But replace mode is slightly different when it comes to MIDI regions. If we click and hold on the replace button, we can see we have various MIDI options for region erase, region punch, content erase, and content punch. With region replace, what will happen is, is that we will replace actual sections of the MIDI region as the playhead passes over it, even if we don't play anything. Let's give it a try. Whereas if we go back and click and hold with region punch, MIDI regions will only be erased where MIDI events have been recorded. I'll lay down a single note using Logic Remote on my iPad and let's give it a try. As you can see, that one note that I played overlapped the first two chords in our performance but not the remaining chords. All right, let's undo using Command Z. Next up, we have Content Erase. With Content Erase, only the MIDI content inside the region will be erased, but even if we don't play anything, that data will still be erased. The region will remain. Here we go. All right, we can see that chord two has been erased because the play had passed over it. Chord one has seemed to not have been erased, but I'm going to guess if we go into the piano roll, that's because the notes of this chord start before bar one. So I'm going to select these notes by clicking, holding, and dragging, bring the chord a little further back, and let's try recording again. There you go. And then lastly, we have content punch. 
Once again, we click and hold on the replace button, go down to content punch. And now only MIDI data inside the region will be erased if we lay down a new MIDI part. So once again, with Logic Remote on my iPad, let's give it a try. There you have it, two new notes, one of which replaced chord two, but again, if we open the piano roll, that's because I undid the step where I moved this chord behind bar one. So those would have been erased as well if the start of the notes didn't begin before bar one. There you go, four different recording modes, all available to you so you can record the way that you need to. Tomorrow, let's dig into take folders and see how awesome they can be for managing different takes in your projects. Thanks so much, and I'll see you for more tomorrow in this newbie to Ninja series. Take care.